We're beginning verse number 14. We've been through two of the Shabbats that are about those who accept Manne and those who have accepted and the consequences of that accepting Manne. This next verse continues on that theme of describing the benefits to the person who has known and accepted within themselves the truth of that oneness. It starts, Manne marg thak na pai. Manne marg thak na pai. The word marg means the path. And the word marg has a sihari, which means on that path. Those who are on that path, tak napai. Tak means a blockage. Those who are on the path cannot be blocked. This is the path beyond theories, beyond philosophies, beyond concepts and ideas. This is the path of knowing. On this path, you cannot be converted to some other path. There is no conversion because you are not on anyone else's path. You are on your own path. You are now on your own internal path. At this point, all insecurities and fears disappear. Fear remains, insecurity remain when you're not sure what path you're on. When you're not sure whether the path that you're walking down is the right one. But when you've been to the destination, when you've seen it, then there is no fear. Then you know that you have been on the path, you have seen what the end of the path is. You are no longer relying on the light of somebody else's lamp to illuminate your path. You have found that lamp that light, that source within you, which has shone a light on your own path. No sins remain here. The sins have been destroyed because the sinner has been destroyed. You don't know yourself to be different from that divine self. There are no obstacles from any angle that can deter you. Manne marg tak And what can be said about somebody on this path? You can only begin to wonder where they are, where they are, what their experience is. And somebody who has been on this path is not like anybody else. They do not walk amongst the normal people without being able to stand out. Their experience alone defines their presence. They walk with an honor, with a grace, 
that seems to come from within. They're not relying on the glory given by other people. They have found that inner glory. Manne patsyo pargat jai. So by accepting, patsyo means with honor, but with honor. Pargat jai. They are exalted. They are glorified. They depart having obtained ultimate glory and ultimate honor. The purpose of your life has been achieved when you have reached this state. And the honor from others is of no concern to you anymore. You're not looking to others to give you that sense of clarity, certainty within yourself. You're not relying on somebody else's opinion. You walk with your own glory. Now, the interesting thing is in the previous verse, we heard that manne jamke saath na jaye, that they do not go with death. Yet here, we're saying that they go with honor. So this is not your typical honor from people. Here the honor means that they are saved, they're carried across. They have almost bypassed death. They've gone to a place that even death can't touch them. That is the honor, that is the grace, that is the special place within divinity that is reserved for people who have completely lost themselves. There is no them left to be taken away. There is no individual ego left. Death is the one that comes and takes the ego from you, the identity from you the maya from you, the body. But when you've transcended all of that and you still exist, not as you the individual, not the you that you know, but the you that was you before you were born. When we talk about the Mool Mantar and the Ikkonkar, Somebody who has become Ikwonka. Somebody who becomes the Kartapurk. They become a Kal. They become a Juni. Beyond death, beyond birth. This is about the ones who have found that which is beyond death within themselves. Remember, we always go back to the Mool Mantar. The Mool Mantar was the opening definition of what Jepji Sahib is trying to describe. So our understanding of what is this manne person like, what is this experience that they're going through, they are going through the experience of the Mool Mantar. They are living what the Mool Mantar is describing. They are living in absolute oneness, in absolute synchronicity with the universe. And because they don't define themselves as individuals, they have no fear. They have no hatred towards anyone. They have completely transcended all that we know about the human experience. We know the human experience as being body, as being mind, but we do, do not know 
the experience of that which is beyond the body and beyond the mind. That is what the Mool Mantra is describing. That is the honor that these people carry. Manne Patsyo Pargat Jai. The journey, the analogy of walking on the path continues with the next line. There is no obstacle on this path. They walk on this path with complete honor. Manne Mag Na Chale Pant. The word mug also means marak. And that means the path. And the word pant also means path. So here, the ones who have known, the ones who have accepted, that one does not go from path to path. Mug na chale pant. They don't move from one path to another. They're not distracted by one set of rituals or another set of rituals. When they have known their own aliveness, then the only rituals that they practice are the ones that are authentic to them. The ones that cultivate that awareness within them. So they do not rely on the practices of others. They know what practice they need in order to maintain that experience of being in, on that path. So they do not have to go from one path to another. They do not need to consult different people about different techniques. They've already been on that path. They've known that path within themselves. They found that path. That path does not require somebody else's definition of right and wrong. They know what is right and wrong in order to maintain that experience. So they do not need to go from one to another. They cannot be converted from one set of practices to another set of practices. Mag na challe pant. And what are they left with if they're not going from one path to another? Manne taram seti sanbang. They live taram. We talked about the difference between religion and taram before. Religion is a set of practices, a set of rules that separate you from others. You belong to one religion and you cannot identify with those who belong to another religion. Taram says that there is only one Taram. In Sukhmani Sahib, it talks about religions and the true Taram. It says, Sagal Taram me Sresht Taram. Of all the religious paths, the one that is approved, the one that is the right path, Sagal Taram me Sresht Taram Har Ko Naam Jap Nirmal Karam. Reciting and meditating on the Naam, that state of knowing, that state of awareness, constantly being in that state of knowing, Harko Nam Jap, this is the only pure action, Nirmal Karam. That Taram of just being connected all the time, that way of living, that is what they are bound to. Manne Taram Seti Sanband. Having known this, they live it. They are bound to it. They are fixed on this path of Taram. So we can say that Taram is the enlightened way of living. This is true religion. 
true spirituality. Seti means sahit, with, taram seti, with taram. And sanband means firmly bound. Firmly bound with the enlightened way of living. By accepting the one who has known within themselves, who has accepted this as the ultimate divine truth, they are bound to this enlightened way of living. Esa nam niranjan hoy. This is what happens when you have nam. This is what happens when you experience that which is beyond maya within yourself. This is the experience of nam. Esa nam niranjan hoy. Je ko man jane man ko. If you have known and accepted within your own self.